The information that we gathered from New Charge Day uh, showed us a lot of the variances of different vehicles. And vehicles have fingerprints. I'm very excited about this because you can tell what a vehicle is by looking at the way it charges without, you don't even need to look at the car. And so each vehicle, like I mentioned, has a, a signature basically that has a, a curve and you can tell what it is. There's four specific vehicles I like to talk about. Let's start with the Chevy Bolt. So the Bolt, when it started charging, um, although the state of charge was a little bit higher, it was interesting because it spiked up um, and then it was a steady flow. And so that is the gold line that you see over there. Uh, and then it went straight line uh, or slightly curved down towards uh, the full charge. And you can see each one of those steps in the black line or the, the gray charcoal line uh, is the state of charge and that's 1% every time it goes up. Another interesting car to take a look at is the Rivian. So as you see in here, the Rivian went straight up to its full potential, 200 kilowatts, and it was a straight line. And then as soon as it hit uh, about 50% state of charge, it started to taper off. And then when it hit 65, it, it takes a cliff and continues on. 75 takes a cliff and continues on, and uh, 85 continues on until it reaches its uh, near 100%. Next vehicle is a Tesla. And so as I mentioned, every vehicle, and I think you can tell right now, has its own curve. Um, so you can see over here, and it's interesting because different Teslas have different battery packs. So it doesn't matter Model 3, Model S, even themselves have different uh, from LFP to NMC chemistry. And in the Tesla, uh, what we've observed uh, throughout different Teslas that we charge, and I think, uh, We've charged four or five Teslas. We even had a guy who charged 200%, drove for an hour and came back for a second charge because he was so excited about using the charger. Um, you can see him on the video if you watch the last one. Uh, and when he plugged in the second time, the charger spiked. Um, so it went up to, uh, I think it was like uh, 150, 200 kilowatts and then it quickly ramped down. And then it was a weird curve where it started to go up and then started to ramp down. Uh, and so that is the precondition in the battery pack. So as a battery pack is in a certain temperature, in a certain uh, state, it's able to push more power. So in that particular instance, it's able to cool the pack quick enough as it's delivering power. Other companies aren't able to cool the pack quick enough as it's delivering power, so it has to derate quicker. Now, uh, the moment of a reveal. Let's see what a Lucid Air did. And this would explain a lot on what happened with Kyle Connor's uh, vehicle or his dad's car uh, when he drove and used uh, Signa chargers. So what you can see over here is that it spiked up to approximately 300 kilowatts and then it, it ramped down uh, pretty drastically. And when it hit 20%, it spiked back up. And then what I want you to do is to take a look at the video uh, and you can hear the air conditioner uh, in, in the vehicle working super hard to try to keep that battery pack cool. Because I'll tell you, 200, 300 kilowatts is not a small amount of energy being delivered into a battery pack. And so it had a nice taper into it um, until it reached its 100% and then it had kind of a, a steady line all the way across. And that's a big battery pack. So whatever the vehicle asks for, we give it. If the vehicle asked for more, we would have given it. So obviously the Lucid Air could have taken more, uh, but in that particular instance, it wasn't preconditioned. He just drove from LA uh, to Phoenix, uh, that long trip. A battery pack was pretty hot uh, and um, needed some preconditioning. But uh, the whole point here, the emphasis here is the transparency part. And so it's like going to the doctor's office and they give you a health report uh, at the end of your, your visit. Um, you know, these are your symptoms, this is the cause, this is the medication you should take. And we kind of want to do something similar. We want to give you these charts after your charge session to demonstrate to you what your vehicle experienced during the charger. It's also to educate you, like for example, some users feel that charging to 100% is better, some feel that 80% is better. What we're here to show you is that every vehicle is different. It depends on your make and model. Some vehicles get the best performance from, let's say, 10 to 50%, and some vehicles are better from uh, 10 to 20. Some are better from 10 to 80. Um, and then typically around the 70, 80% mark is when you see a drastic reduction of energy delivered to the vehicles. And so at that point, my question to you is, why would you still stay at a fast charger? You would make up more time to go into another fast charger and charging. So you kind of got to learn about your vehicles. A little bit of planning is required, but if infrastructure is abundant, it doesn't matter charge to 50% and then head on to the next site because time is valuable um, and different cars charge at different rates. Obviously, we're entering into new territory. We're exceeding CCS spec. Uh, and I had a few conversations with some other people who said, but come on guys, you don't meet the spec. We meet and exceed the spec. There are other manufacturers who say they're a CCS, but they're an older version of CCS and they can't keep up. 
And so the most important thing for us is to always be on the cutting edge and provide you the best experience ever. Now, a question I always ask for all the viewers, uh, I want you to put in the comments, where would you like to see some of this infrastructure? Where do you feel that there is a missing link in terms of utility power and distance and electric vehicles that you feel is an appropriate place to put a charger. Uh, I'm asking because, hey, what's the next step for the charger? The hardware is done. It works. We've done interoperability testing. We've done performance testing. Uh, we've done so much testing on the hardware now that we're up to the software part. Uh, and now we're looking at places to deploy. So the next step is designing for manufacturing as well as combining our software ecosystem uh, and deploy this charger out. Uh, New is gonna be a charging provider as well as an infrastructure provider for energy storage. And I'm gonna walk over here. We're gonna finish it off. We're gonna plug in uh, the Mini Cooper. This cable here, designed for a continuous 700 kilowatts, used the entire day from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. and never got hot to the touch. 700 kilowatts through a cable that you can plug in with one hand. I dare you to record a video going to a 350 kilowatt charge station out there today with one hand and plug it in the vehicle. Yet yeah, alone a cable that's this long is something that unheard of. And that's it. No screens. All you have to do is if it's your first time, you open up the app or the website, type in your information to unlock the charger, and it just delivers you the power. You can stop the charge when you want, you can unplug it when you want, and it's done. And then you get yourself an email summary of your charge session, uh, and maybe a graph that you can refer to. So what we're doing here at New is designing systems that have no bottlenecks, that have no limits, uh, and provide you the best experience you can possibly get. I'm really excited about this. Um, it's just every day the, the amount of progress that we make here is just, you gotta see it for yourself. So in that case, stay tuned for more. I gotta go back to work.